Hello! In this video, we're going to be talking about wiring for your robots, and we're just going to show some basic concepts of wiring servos and motors, and also the required electronics, and hopefully that'll teach you enough for what you need to know to wire your robot. We're doing this off of the robot, just for clarity, but make sure that your, ro your robot does actually have the wires on it. These are all the required electronics for every robot, by the rules. You need an approved Android device, a power distribution module, and a 12 volt DC battery. We can start out by wiring these together. And the first thing we want to do is we want to connect the Android device to the power distribution module. You will need a micro to mini USB cable. And start out by taking the micro end and plugging it into the port on your Android device. Then take the mini end and plug it into the port on the power distribution module. Then we need to connect the battery to the power distribution module. The connectors for the battery and the power distribution module might be different, so you may need to create a connector piece like we've done so here, or change the connectors on one of these. We recommend using Anderson power poles because everything else uses that. So now we will show the basics of wiring motors. You will need a motor controller and obviously motors. The motor controller has a mini USB port on the back, a 12 volt DC in port on the front, and two DC outputs on the front for the motors. It also has encoder ports for each motor if you are using encoders, but we're not going to be going over that. To start out wiring, take a mini USB to regular USB cable, and plug the mini USB end into the back of the motor controller, and the regular USB end into any port of the power distribution module. Choose a port that works best for you. Now we can take a power wire and plug one end into the 12 volt DC input on the front of the motor controller and take the other end and plug it into any port on the power distribution module that works best for you. To help with the wiring looking nice, you can just have these wires running next to each other like so. Now we can take our motors and we can plug them into the motor controller. Again, just choose a port that works best for you. So now we will show the basics of wiring servos. You will need a servo controller and obviously a servo. The servo controller has a mini USB mini port on the back, a 12 volt DC import on the front, and six PWM channels for plugging in your servos. Start out wiring by taking a, another mini to regular USB uh, cable and taking the mini USB end, plug that into the back of the servo controller, and then take the regular USB end and plug it into any port on the power distribution module that works best for you. Now we will take a, another power cable and plug one end into the 12 volt DC input on the servo controller and take the other end and plug it into any port that works best for you on the power distribution module. Again, to make the wiring look nice, we can have these wiring, wires running next to each other. Now we will take our servo and we can plug that in. Again, choose a port that works best for you, but do note that there are markings on the side of this to indicate the orientation that you need to plug the wiring or the wire into. The labels are WRB or white, red, black, and they indicate what color of the wire corresponds to which pin. Uh, if you don't have the exact same coloring as white, red, black, it's fine, just go lightest to darkest. And then again, choose a port that works best for you. So now at this point, your wiring should look something like this, where you have servo and motor controllers all plugged into your power distribution module, and you have your Android and your battery connected. So now what we can do is we can turn on the main power switch, which is on the side of the power distribution module, and we can check to make sure that the power runs through everything just nice. If you see any sparks or anything, turn off your power. You should see that there should be LEDs on all of your electronics. If you don't see any, then check your wiring, check your fuses. Uh, note that there are fuses on the battery, and also there's one here on the power distribution module. Once you've done that, you can turn off the power and make your wiring on your robot look nice. Make sure that your wires aren't spanning any open gaps and that they're nicely organized because that can help with damage prevention and also with maintenance. The first thing we need to do is configure the electronics in the robot controller phone. 
you might find the robot controller app on this page, or it could be in your list of apps. If you don't find it in either, you can either download it from the Google Play Store, or it'll appear on your phone automatically when you download and compile code. Now, make sure the phone is connected to all the main electronics and turn on the robot power. Next, what you'll need to do is hit the More Options button and open up the settings. Once you're in the settings, tap Configure Robot, and in here, hit New to make a new configuration. Then click Scan. This will look for all devices that the phone is connected to. Next, we're going to configure the motors. Look for something in the list of devices named something like Motor Controller 1 and tap on it. Once here, you can rename the motor controller to something more descriptive and helpful. I've renamed my motor controller to Drive Motor Controller. Now look at your own motor controller, and for every port that has a motor in it, check the corresponding checkbox. From here, you can rename the motors. The motor's name has to be exactly the same as what you have named those motors in the code. The code we are using has the motors named motor left and motor right, so I have named the corresponding motors exactly the same. Once you've done this, hit done. Now we're going to do the same thing for the servo controller. Servo controllers can also be renamed to something more helpful. Our servo controller has a servo motor plugged into port 1, so we're going to check the port 1 box. Make sure that you give servos names in the same fashion that you gave motors names. In our code, the name of the servo is arm servo, so I will name it accordingly in the configuration file. Once you have done that, hit done. Once you have configured all of your electronics, hit the Save Configuration button. You'll be prompted for a file name, enter something useful. Once you've entered the name, hit OK. Once you have done that, press the Back button to get to the list of configuration files and activate your configuration. Make sure the top of the screen says something like Active Configuration File and then the name of your configuration file. Hit the Back button again until you get to the main robot controller screen. Once you get to this screen, it should say Wi-Fi Direct Enabled and eventually get to Robot Status Running. If you have any error messages, make sure that all of your electronics are plugged in and turned on and that your configuration file is accurate. So that's it for this video. We've demonstrated the basics of how to wire motors and servos together along with all of the other required electronics. We've also demonstrated how to configure the robot controller phone and hopefully that teaches you what you need to know in order to wire and configure ro your robot. Check out our next video on how to run the code for your robot. Until then, we'll see you later. Goodbye.